everyone, my name is Rose Romandi from Perfected by Blood Ministries and in this video I am going to talk to you about chapter 13 of the book of Revelation. But before that, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, I want to invite you to subscribe because we are going through the teaching of the book of Revelation chapter by chapter. And at the same time, I want to uh, encourage you to sign up for a free ebook in our website perfectedbyblood.com forward, forward slash sign up and sign now for a free ebook to understand how you can study the Bible more effectively. All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk to you about chapter 13 of the book of Revelation. So this chapter probably is one of the most taught chapters uh, in the book of Revelation. And we hear this often over and over when it comes about the end times. And usually the beast that is rising in chapter 13 of book of Revelation, it is referring to, uh, to the countries out there or to the people. But today in this video, we are going to take a look at the scriptures together to understand what this chapter is talking about. In chapter 12, um, we talked about the woman mostly and that was the focus of chapter 12 in the book of Revelation. But what happened was in chapter 12, that was, all, that was um, almost the first time that we are introduced to the dragon and going forward, we are going to see how this dragon basically is working um, or trying to get the church to follow him. So now... <clears throat> This is basically uh, the general way of looking at the picture. But now here's the thing. Um, so again, I have to um, basically emphasize on this fact over and over and over, at least in our YouTube channel, because I know there is always new people that are, they are watching the video teachings and they, there is a chance that they haven't watched the previous teachings. And if that's you, I want to invite you to go to our YouTube channel after you watch this video and look for the other teachings because we are in the middle of the book of Revelation and I am not going to cover all the other stuff that we covered in the previous videos. But I have to emphasize on this, that the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Let me give you an example. If I am Iranian, uh, I'm Persian, and if I write a book about hundred about uh, Persian foods, okay, so 200 recipes of Persian foods, and I write it in a book, and I send it to some of my friends out there, or I send it to you, what do you expect to get in that book? Do you expect to find out Chinese food or Indian food? Of course, no, because the beginning of the book or the cover of the book, I said, okay, this is going to be about Persian food, okay? So now this is the same thing with the revelation of Jesus Christ, because when it says it's the revelation of Jesus Christ, that means every single scripture must reveal to us who Jesus Christ is. Now, going back to my example, if you start reading my book and I give you all the recipes and all the things about the Persian food, and all of a sudden in the middle of the book, you get to a section that I'm talking to you about some spices that are used in different countries. Okay, so for example, like Indian spice or the Chinese spice or um, like um, something that is not Persian. Do you, can you say that that book is going to give me Persian, uh, the Chinese food? Because I talked about some Chinese spices of course, no. Even though if you see that I'm talking about some other cultures in my book, it's always toward bringing you to the Persian food and eventually give you the Persian food, right? So this is what happens in the book of Revelation. So when we see, when we travel through the pages of the book of Revelation and we start finding the trees and the lampstand and the two witnesses, and then we get to the chapter 13 that is talking about the beasts, we shouldn't be off track and think, that this is really revealing to us about the beast, but it is actually revealing to us about something else, about Jesus Christ and how God is working to clean not only the heaven, but also the earth from these beasts. Let me show you this. In chapter 12 of the book of Revelation, <clears throat> 
we saw that as soon as the woman gave birth to the male child, this, this child or this son was caught up to heaven, and then there was a war, and the dragon that was in, in the heaven fell down on earth. So now, I want you to pay attention that the dragon is no longer in heaven on earth. So who's in heaven? In heaven is the son that is just, that is born, and the son is sitting on the throne. All right, so now I can show you this here. Uh, so look at, take a look at chapter um, 12. So this video is going to be about understanding of um, who the dragon is, what the dragon is, the beast, and toward the end of this video, I'm going to talk to you about the mark of the beast because we have so many people asking us about the mark of the beast and I'm going to get that. But I don't want you to jump forward because if you don't know what the beast is, then you won't understand what the mark of the beast is, right? So now, let's get started. So in Revelation chapter 12, the dragon is cast from heaven. Do you see it? So let's go to uh, verse 9 in Revelation chapter 12. It says, so the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old. So where did he cast out from? Look at verse 7. And the war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought. So there was a war happening in heaven. So now, when the son was born that we talked about it in chapter 12 is the son of God, the seed of the word of God that is born. That seed at the birth kicks the dragon out of heaven and now heaven is cleansed from the presence of the dragon. So now the dragon is fall to the earth. So now um, look at, um, so basically verse 9 says, so the great dragon was cast out that serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast with him. So now we, this is the picture of the heaven and the earth. And this is a good place that I briefly explain this to you. Even though we already talked about it a lot of times in our YouTube channel about the heaven and the earth. So when we talk about heaven and earth, we are talking about the creation. So if you remember in Genesis, God created the heavens and the earth. But by the time you come to the New Testament, you realize that this creation that, um, you know, talking about the heaven and earth, it is a new creation. We must come and enter into a new creation. And Apostle Paul revealed to us that, and he said that, he said that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. So he is the new heaven and the new earth. Okay, so I don't want to lose you here. I want you just, I don't have time in this video to show you all the scriptures about heaven and earth. And please, I want to ask you to trust me as I am just concluding from all those scriptures. And then you can go ahead, either watch a video in our YouTube channel or just do your own study. So there was an old heaven and earth and there is a new heaven and earth. So the New Testament reveals to us that the creation of the heaven and earth, it is actually a man, a type of man, a man, a heaven and earth representing man in the New Testament. So, but the overall understanding, if we wanna get a little details, we realize that heaven is a place of authority is the place that is higher than the earth, is the place that the rulership happened. Genesis chapter one, God put the stars in heaven to rule on earth. So, and even in Isaiah, we read, it says the heaven is my throne and the earth is, the earth is my footstool. So the heaven is where the throne is. So now you're gonna either have the throne of the son of God and son of God is sitting there, or you're gonna have a throne where the beast or the dragon sits there. Let me show you, look at verse 13 and um, chapter 13 verse one. And actually let's take a look at verse two and I'm gonna read toward the end of the verse because it's a very, very long verse. Toward the end of the verse it says, the dragon 
gave him his power, his throne, and his authority. So do you see, the dragon has a throne. So therefore, the place of the authority or throne is called the heaven. So whatever you obey, or you follow, or you are serving, that becomes your authority in life, and that becomes the heaven that is ruling over you. So that's a very, very general way of looking at it, and there is, of course, so much more into it. But what I want you to see here is the difference between heaven and earth. So now, let's understand what happens on earth, because the dragon, the beast and the next beast that is coming out, they are all are the ones that people who are on earth are worshiping those, those beasts, basically. So uh, let me show you here. In verse 13, there is a beast that comes out and people are worshiping him. Look at verse um, chapter 13. Look at verse 8. It says, all who dwell on earth will worship him whose name is worship this beast basically so I'm not going to read the rest and if you go to uh, verse basically um, a few verse later there is another ver the beast that is coming out of the earth and now and all those who are on earth will worship this beast as well so look at verse 14 uh, sorry, verse 13, he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth, right, on the earth in the sight of man. So now, here's the thing. So we have a dragon, a beast, and another beast, and the whole story of the book of Revelation, it's around these three beasts, if we want to call them all beast and they all have the authority and they all reign on earth okay so first of all you know let me show you every every one of this um and you know what actually let me talk about the the earth first and then we can move on to the next part look at verse 9 in chapter 12 it says so the great dragon um, was cast out the serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. Do you see? So it says, okay, this dragon, which had the seven head and all the things that we read in the beginning of chapter 12, is actually the serpent of old. Okay, which serpent? And it says, okay, it's also called the devil and Satan. So what is it called? Okay, so there is one thing that is called serpent and called dragon and called the devil and called Satan. Basically, they are not different things or different beings. There is only one thing that is called all of these things, okay? And I have to say it here, in the bracket before we continue, is that this um, serpent, later on, there is a woman sitting on this dragon and called Babylon, and it's called Babylon the mystery the Babylon, the mystery. And what I want to say is we have the mystery of lawlessness. That means as much as Jesus Christ is a mystery, Babylon and the dragons and the beasts, they are a mystery too. We must, um, the Spirit of God must reveal to us through the Spirit and the Word that what they are. And let me tell you this, that you, whatever you think you know about them, you must put them aside because if it's a mystery that God must reveal to you today. And if it's, when we talk about the mystery, that means it's not something that everyone knows about it. Okay, it's something that you must pursue through the Spirit of God and through the Word of God so God can reveal to you. Majority of Christianity believes in the devil and Satan exactly the same things that the Muslims believe. So I was a Muslim and we believed in Satan and the devil and the same stuff that we believed then, now Christians believe it. So now, 
can we say they had the revelation of this mystery through the spirit of Jesus Christ? Of course, no, because they don't know Jesus Christ. They don't have the spirit. They don't follow the word of God and the spirit. So can they can have the revelation of who God is. And through that, they can have the revelation of who the devil is. So now here's the thing. All the stuff you know, I'm pretty sure you have to put them, put them all aside because God has, re has to reveal to us what they are through the Spirit. And today in this video, we are going to see it in more clearly. So now here says that the serpent of old. So let's say they just pause for a moment. This dragon, who's the huge dragon with seven head and probably terrifying because it's a dragon and no longer a little snake that, you know, uh, fishing in the garden or, you know, like uh, sneaking around. It's now the serpent has turned to a dragon. What really happened? How do you grow a being, right? How this serpent grew into a dragon unless you, the serpent was eating something feeding the serpent was feeding itself with food and because there was enough food to devour and eat now that serpent is start growing and becoming a dragon okay so I want you to follow here by the time I'm gonna talk about what the serpent or the devil is in this video okay so but I need to lay down some foundation here to make sure that you, you know, you have the foundation before we move on. So Revelation, Genesis chapter three, one of the most important chapters in the Bible because it tells you what really happened and how we got off track. So Genesis chapter three, look at verse, um, look at verse 14. It says, so the Lord God said to the serpent, which we are talking about the dragon in future, right? So at the time, that serpent is only the serpent, right? So the Lord said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust. Do you see? It says you shall eat dust. So now, I want you to understand that, okay, so there is a food that this serpent is eating and the food of this serpent is dust. Now, uh, let's, uh, let's continue. Then look at verse 17. So serpent has a food and the food of serpent is dust. Look at verse 17. Then to Adam he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of tree of which I commanded you not to eat, then he's talking to him. And look at the last verse in verse 19. It says, and for dust you are and to dust you shall return. Oh, okay. So here it says, okay, God told serpent, your food is going to be dust. And then he tells he tells basically Adam, Adam, when the moment you eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you became of the earth. You became dust. You are now dust and you must return to dust. So the, the earthly man, Adam, who has the knowledge of good and evil, the wisdom that is not of God, the wisdom that is of serpent is now the food for the serpent. Let me show you here. Look at verse, um, uh, so serpent comes, start talking to them. Look at verse six in Genesis chapter three. It says, so when the woman saw that the tree was good and it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate it. So do you see? So when serpent came to talk to the woman, so eventually they eat, they followed um, the voice of the serpent and they did something God told them not to do. So what they did, what they ate, um, the knowledge that they just gained by eating that tree of knowledge of good and evil, it wasn't the wisdom of God. 
It was the wisdom of the serpent. They saw I can be wise. So this wisdom here that the woman is looking for is not the wisdom that God gives because they didn't listen to God. It's the wisdom that the serpent gave them. So do you see? So now God says, you know what? You ate of that wisdom. You, um, you thought the wisdom of the serpent, simply paraphrasing, you thought the wisdom of, you thought the serpent can give you wisdom. Simple as that, right? Because the serpent said, if you eat of it, you're going to be like God and all the stuff. So you thought the serpent can give you wisdom. Now that made you, that made you the man from the earth, dust. And now you, because dust is the food to the serpent, you become basically the food for the serpent. So God said to serpent, you're going to eat the dust. And then he said to Adam, you are dust. So the earthly man with the earthly wisdom became the food for the serpent. So that's why in Revelation, now this serpent has eaten a lot of food and fed itself by the dust. Now it's grown into what? Into a dragon. So do you see when Jesus basically um, smashed the head of the serpent, he really smashed the head of the dragon. So now here's the thing. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15 it tells us that the first man, Adam, was of the earth, earthly, and he was of the dust. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and look at verse, all right, so let me find my 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And now look at verse 44. It says, um, sorry, verse 45. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living soul. It says living being, but actually the word is soul. So I want you to pay attention to the word soul there because we are going to see that in chapter 13 of the book of Revelation. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. And look at verse 48. So he is comparing two different men. He's comparing the natural man or the soulish man with the spiritual man or the life-giving spirit man. Okay, so for verse 47 says, the first man, which was the soulish man, was of the earth made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Do you see the earth and the heaven? So what happened in heaven? The dragon that was ruling and it was in the authority in heaven was cast down through the Son of God on earth. Now the dragon is on earth and really can't eat the man that is in heaven. So before what happened was this dust of the earth had exalted themselves to heaven, has risen themselves. And they said, you know what? This is the story of Babylon. Let us build ourselves a name so we can reach out to heaven. So this dust had polluted the heaven and the dragon not only was eating the dust on the earth, but also the dust that was in heaven. So the dragon was ruling over man had became the authority and heaven of man. Okay, guys, so I know I said a lot and hopefully, you know, you're following around here with me. So what am I saying here? It says, okay, now the dust is on earth. The dragon in heaven is cast down and now the dragon can't reach to heaven. Do you remember that when God came to Abraham, he told Abraham that from this seed, your descendant is going to be like the sand of the sea and like the stars of heaven. So two things, sand of the sea on earth and the stars of he heaven, uh, the stars of heaven. So long story short, that seed that God was talking about, about the stars of heaven, it's talking about the seed that is in Christ. So he is the one who is actually risen, resurrected, went back to the position of authority, sitting in the heaven, and now he's rising up people in 
to be a spiritual people, that means to be heavenly people and not any more earthly people. So did you see from the, the journey from Adam, the earthly man, to, the, to, to uh, Christ, the life-giving spirit, the heavenly man. So God is changing and turning the dust of the earth to be the stars of heaven. As long as you are earthly, carnal, and dusty from the earth and has the wisdom of the earth, you are food for the serpent, but you must rise into your true identity as the spirit man, a spiritual man, the one who is in heaven, life-giving spirit. So now let's just take this clear, like make it really simple here. So the dragon became dragon because there were people of the earth, dust people, earthly people. And the reason there are people that are dusty or earthly, it's because we kept eating from a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And we looked for a wisdom that is not from above. We looked for a wisdom that is from the earth and that made us earthly. Okay, so now Revelation chapter 12 says, this old serpent became the dragon, but here's the thing, the dragon is now cast on earth. What does it say? Now it says, woe to the inhabitant of earth. Look at, um, look at verse 12 in Revelation chapter 12. It says, therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Do you see? So who dwells in heaven? The spiritual man is from heaven, right? We read it in 1 Corinthians chapter 50. Rejoice if you are in the spirit, if you are the spirit man and not a soulish earthly man. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows he has a short time. Why? Because the same son, why, why does he think he knows that he has a short time? Because the same son who was raised to heaven, we read it in verse 7, and he basically uh, cast out the dragon from the heaven. He is now coming on earth because now the earth must be cleansed from the dragon. Okay, so that no man ever eat the wisdom of the dragon. No man ever worship the beast. Okay, so he knows he has a short time because that son of God is now not only he cleansed the heaven, he must also shake the earth from all the earthly and dusty stuff so that the new heaven and new earth will come out basically. So now here it says, therefore, the issue, the problem of this dragon that we just talked about and the following beasts that we are going to see are for people that are of the earth earthly. So we just read it. The soulish people, the carnal man, Adam, is the one who's going to worship the beast. All right. So let's see what is this beast really and just understand this a little better. Look at verse 1 in Revelation chapter 13. Then I stood on the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rising out of the sea. So let's wait here. It says, I stood on the sand of the sea and then I saw a beast rising out of the sea. Okay, so do you see here, John says, I stood on the sand of the sea. He didn't say, I stood in the heaven and then I saw a beast coming out of the sea. He said, I stood on the sand and then I saw the beast coming out of heaven. So therefore, the, the reason the beast came out of the sea is because he was standing on the sand of the sea. So now I want you to pay attention here. Because a few verse before that says, blessed are the inhabitants of the heavens. If you are in heaven, you're going to stand in heaven. So John says, the moment I stand on the sand of the sea, then I saw a beast rising out of the sea. 
Okay, so now, keep in mind, I'm going to talk about the sand of the sea shortly. But keep in mind here, it says, I saw, I saw a beast rising up. So this beast, he couldn't see the beast. This beast wasn't seeable. seeable. <laughs> so he saw it when he found himself standing on the sound of the sea. Not when he found himself standing in the heavens. In the place that he, God prepared for him to stand. So what is the sand of the sea? So as I said, um, God came to Abraham and said, your descendant is going to be like the sand of the sea and the stars of heaven, like the sand of the sea and the stars of heaven in multitude, basically. So now, what is the story of the sand of the sea? And if we let the scriptures, to interpret the scriptures for us, we realize the sand of the sea is representing the sand of the seashore. They are representing the wisdom of the earthly man. So let me show you here. Let's go to, actually, let's go to 1 Kings. And let's go to chapter, um, chapter 10 in 1 Kings. So this is the story of Solomon here. Okay, so Solomon, here he once he asked God and he said, God, you know, give me a wisdom because you put me as a king here and now you want me to rule over these people. So I need a wisdom to rule over these people. So basically he didn't ask for wisdom. He says, I need an earring here, basically. And hearing, sorry, and hearing ear right? So, um, so, and then God gave him the wisdom. But the thing is, if you read the story of Solomon, God kept coming to Solomon and he said, Solomon, if you keep my ways the way your father kept and don't turn your heart away from me, then I'm going to establish your kingdom. I'm going to do this. But Solomon turned his heart away from the Lord. Before we, before I show you that verse, let me show you here. In chapter 11 of uh, 1 King, it says, But King Solomon loved many foreign women as well as the daughter of Pharaoh. So verse 2, it says, From the, um, all these nations, from the nations of whom the Lord had said to the children of Israel, You shall not intermarry with them, nor they with you surely they will turn away your hearts after their gods, All right? So, but it says Solomon went and actually married the nations that God said don't marry to. So do you see? Okay, so verse three says, and he had 700 wives, princes, and 300 concubines, and he, his wives turned his heart away turned away his heart. For it was so when Solomon was old that his wives turned his heart after other gods and his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God. Do you see heart, heart, heart. His heart was not loyal to the Lord and he turned his God to the other gods. Okay. So, um, as was the heart, so his heart was not loyal to the, to the Lord, his God, as was the heart of his father, David. So verse six, so Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and did not fully follow the Lord as his father did. So do you see Solomon is started by asking for wisdom. He started with a good intention, but eventually he didn't finish well, right? He turned away to evil to other gods and that means what God gave him to be uh, as a wisdom to rule to become the heavenly wisdom for him he turned to be the earthly wisdom for him he turned his heart to the other gods so let me show you this verse heart here look at verse 10, verse 24 in chapter 10 first king it says now all the earth 
sought the presence of Solomon to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. Do you see? So what happened was the wisdom that God gave to Solomon, God had put him in his heart. So now uh, let me show you this verse here. Uh, says, okay, so um, I think it's, let's read it. Let's continue reading. Um, actually, I don't have the verse here. It should be somewhere in First King that it said Solomon, his heart was the, um, yes, but uh, yeah, I found it. So let's go to First King chapter four. So look at verse 29, it says, And God gave Solomon wisdom, an exceedingly great understanding, and largeness of heart like the sand on the seashore. So do you see, there is the sand of the seashore is that wisdom and understanding that was in the heart of Solomon. But later on, we see that he turned away his heart from the Lord. So what do we see? So God gave the wisdom to Solomon, but he turned that he um, turned uh, down that wisdom and picked up the wisdom of the earth of the earthly man because he turned his heart to the other gods. The other gods started giving him that uh, wisdom. So his heart which was large in the sand of the seashore became the wisdom of the other gods. So what do we see? So Solomon is the example of a man that actually has the earthly wisdom. God gave him that wisdom, but he turned down that wisdom and he didn't walk in the wisdom of God. He went to the other gods and filled his heart with the wisdom of the other gods. So now the sand of the seashore is representing the wisdom of the wisdom and understanding that Solomon had, but not from above, but actually from the earth. So, so here's the thing. Jesus came and Jesus said that I, someone greater than Solomon is here. So, so many people are desiring the wisdom of Solomon, but the wisdom of Solomon was really the earthly wisdom. A man that got to the to the fullness of the wisdom of the earthly. He got to the end of the wisdom that someone can have in natural, carnal way. So, but Jesus said, someone greater than Solomon is here. Why? Because the wisdom that he's bringing is actually from above, the wisdom and understanding. So now let's go back to Revelation chapter 13. So it says, I stood on the sand of the sea. So let's read this with this understanding that we have. I stood on the wisdom and understanding of the earthly man not the heavenly man, the spiritual man, the earthly man. And then I saw a beast rising out of the sea. So do you see the beast that is rising out of the sea? So if you continue reading here, it says the dragon gave all the authority, power, and everything that he had to this beast that is risen from the sea. Now uh, look at um, verse... Uh, four, look at verse four. It says, and they worship the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worship the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? So do you see, they worshiped, they worship the dragon and they worship the beast. So what do we see here? What happens? Who do you worship? So man always worships God. You know, you, I, the, the, we worship God. So what does it say? It says, you know, that dragon and the beast became God to some of these people. What, which people? The inhabitant of the earth. The earthly man 
the carnal man who is stiff-necked and closes ears and eyes to the spirit, doesn't hear what the spirit says and doesn't uh, see what the spirit wants to show him. And if you go and read the book of Proverbs, it says the wise is the one who hears. The wise is not the one who has wisdom. It's interesting because the wise is not the one who has his wisdom. The wise is the one who hears what the spirit says, follows the voice of something, someone, which is God. The wise is the one who follows the voice of God. But the wisdom of the earth, you're following the voice of another God. And this is how actually the worship happens. So do you see? The dragon is a god actually, and the beast is kind of a god because the inhabitants of the earth worship them. So now, by the time you get to the end of this video, you have to watch it from beginning because then you, it, does, it makes sense to you what I'm talking here. But I'm putting layers upon layers to get you somewhere, all right? So now, um, look, at, look at verse 8. Uh, look at verse 8 in... Revelation chapter 13, and all who dwell on earth will worship him. Again, not the inhabitants of heaven, no, the inhabitants of the earth. So now, what do we see again? The earthly man that is from the earth is going to worship this beast, and guess what? They eventually become the food of the same beast. So now, that's the story here. It's because they are from the earth, dusty so the inhabitants of the earth worship them so now look at this whose name have not been written in the book of the life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world so i don't have time to talk about this let's move on to the next uh, next beast here so the first beast came from the sea and the inhabitants of the earth worship him the dragon fell from heaven to the earth Woe to the inhabitants of the earth because the dragon has come to them, right? Because the dragon is hungry and has come to devour the inhabitants of the earth because the food of the dragon is them, the dust, right? So now, here, says, look at verse 11, all right? Uh, it's a story of another beast. It says, then I saw another beast coming out of the earth this time. So now, interestingly, John says, I stood on the wisdom and the understanding of the carnal man. And first I saw this beast came and it, and it got even worse. Another one came out now. So now, one came from the sea, another came from the earth. Do you pay attention? They came out from the sea and the earth, right? So one of them was, the dragon was in heaven, sea and the earth. Okay, so, and then he says, I saw a beast coming coming out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon okay and he exercised all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth so pay attention the earth not the heaven not the inhabitants of the heaven the earth not the heavenly man the spiritual man the earthly man so causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast so again so worship comes to the picture so the job of this beast i want you to pay attention here this is really there's so much to say in every single verse here and uh, i want to give you the main point so that you can build on it actually we we have um, our revelation of jesus christ course where we go verse by verse chewing and breaking down the scriptures so we can understand it and because it, the word of God has to be broken to small pieces so we can, we can digest. So this is what has to happen here. There's so much to say, but I trust that you will do your own study. Okay, so now here says that cause these people to worship. So the job of this, earth, this beast from the earth is to make people to worship the, the first beast that came out of the sea. So now look at verse um, 13. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. 
and he deceives those who dwell on earth. Again, not in heaven, on earth. He deceives those who dwell on earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on earth. <laughs> do you see the emphasis? Those who dwell on earth. To make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. So now it says, okay, the way, the, the job of this beast is to causing people to worship the other beast. And in order to do that, he causes people to, to make an image. So he basically creates an image of this beast and causes people and tells people to worship this beast. Now, this beast, which is from the earth, is like the lamb with two horns and it speaks like the dragon, okay? So the thing is, he's later called in the book of Revelation is called the false prophet, all right? This beast later is called the false prophet. Why? Because he's going to be, he's the false image he creates the false image of God. So do you see, it says, what does he do? He makes an image of what? The first beast. Who was the first beast? A God that people worshiping. But, you know, if he comes and say, you know, I am the false God, worship me. Nobody's going to worship him. What happens? He's going to create an image and presents that image to you and tells you this is who God is. And then you think this is who God is. And because you genuinely believed that this is God, therefore you worship this God. So now let's take a look at the children of Israel in wilderness. When Moses went up, to um to the mountain to talk to god and get you know the the tablets of a stone and come back what happened was people came to aaron the high priest and says you know we don't know what happened to this moses um where is this god who brought us out of egypt let's make the, let's just create an image of this god basically so they put all their earrings and every uh, the gold that they brought from egypt and they turned that into a calf, the golden calf that we know the story. But if you go and read this story, the amazing part is they didn't say, this is another God who is going to be with us, who is going to deliver us. They didn't say that. They said this, they said, this is Yahweh. This is the God who brought us out of Egypt. Do you see? They said, this is the God. That calf, golden calf, is actually the Yahweh who brought us out of Egypt. And people fell down and worshiped. When Moses came back and said, Aaron, what is going on here? Aaron says, I don't know. They brought their goals. I put it in the fire and this thing came out. And this is the story of what's happening in the church. Jesus, Jesus is gone for 2,000 years. We don't know what has become of him. We went to whoever when we can and we created this thing and we called it Jesus Christ. We created that image and we think it's God and we are following this false prophet that is, that is like a lamb, but it's not the lamb of God. Okay, so now, did you see the picture here? The picture is to create an image like what serpent did in, in Genesis chapter 3. Serpent in Genesis chapter 3 gave an image of God to them. Serpent told them, God knows that if you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. He, the serpent just painted the image of God for them, created an image. And because they don't walk, they didn't walk with God. They didn't have the revelation of who God is because they didn't know who God is. When they bought that image, they worshiped that image. They said, oh my goodness, really? Is this who God is? Oh, okay. So they, serpent gave them an image of a God that is lie, right? So here's the thing. 
Therefore, the interesting part is, in verse 11 says that this beast that has come from the earth is like the lamb. What is so significant about the lamb? What is, why is it not like anything else? Why is it saying lamb? Because he is wolf in the sheep clothing that Jesus talked about. He looks like a lamb. That's the thing. What serpent talked to, to Adam and Eve in Genesis, he spoke words that looked like the word of God to them. It, lo it, it looked truth. It, they bought it because they, they thought it's the truth. So now here says, this is like a lamb. Which lamb? Trying to imitate the picture of the lamb of God. So we know the lamb of God is Jesus Christ. So the image that this false, this beast is creating is creating the image, the kind of image of Jesus Christ that is not Jesus Christ. It's the false image. So now we are talking about the image here, right? So if you have been studying your Bible and not only listening to the teachers out there, you know that there is a verse in Colossians that talks about the image of God, right? So let's go read that verse together. Let's look at Colossians chapter 1. Look at, um, look at verse, you know what, we can read from verse 13, just to enjoy some verses together. So Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones and dominions or principalities and powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the Christ, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that is that in all things he may have preeminence. So do you see the head, he is the head of the body. So Jesus Christ is the head who gave his life for the body. So now here says he is the image of the living God. So do you see, therefore the image that this beast is creating, the beast from the earth, it's a kind of image that it tells you, you know, this is the Christ. And then you look at this image, you're like, oh my God, so this is the Christ, but you don't know. Actually, this image is not the Christ, is the image of the beast. And then you fall and worship. And this is really what has happened to the church, giving an image of Christ to the church. And honestly, the Christ that majority of churches out there are presenting or revealing is actually the beast that is devouring. How many times have you heard the message of the end times, of Jesus is coming to judge and destroy and bring that destruction? This is the job of the dragon, guys. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth because the dragon is coming to devour you. We have a high priest, Jesus Christ, tender-hearted, compassionate, the Lamb of God that gave his life to save the world and now all of a sudden he is the dragon to uh, devour the world. And I have heard this teaching before that first Jesus came as a lamb, now he's going to come as a lion. Yeah, he's going to come as a lion, not as a beast to devour people and inhabitants of the earth. I mean, guys, we have to quit seeing uh, the beast, the Jesus Christ that they're representing to many of us in those end time prophecies stuff out there. It's the beast. They have turned Jesus Christ to the beast. It's the image of the beast that is devouring. He is the savior of mankind. This is what who he is. Not some kind of a beast that comes hungry to devour because you didn't believe in me. 
All right, so I don't want to get off track here. So now let's go to, so now the image is the image of the, of that basically beast. So now, can you tell me right now, after like, I've been talking for 54 minutes here. So if, who is the beast then? If the image of the beast is not the image of the son of God, then but we think it's the image of the Son of God. Then who is the beast? What kind of image is this? Right? I'm going to read a couple of more verses and you'll find the answer in the next verses. And please read your Bibles because it's so simple and it tells you in verse 18 who the beast is. Okay? So now, look at verse, um, uh, look at verse... Verse 16. Okay, so now um, I'm gonna, okay, before we move on, I'm gonna share my screen here with you and I'm trying to finish this, but I just wanted to take my time, make sure that I cover everything in this chapter. So once for all, you put an end to all confusion and rise up in your identity in Christ Jesus and overcome the beast. Look at, let me show you before I switch my screen here. Look at verse seven. It says, it was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And the authority was given to him over every tribe, tongue and nation. Why? Because those saints are still carnal in some aspects of their lives. Now, but look at verse uh, 10, it's now the overcoming of the, uh, the saints happen. He who leads to captivity shall go to cap into captivity and he who uh, he kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. He, here is the patience and the faith of the saints. That's what causes you to overcome this beast. And here's the thing, guys, the problem with Antichrist out there somewhere is that you and I don't have to deal with it. Is that the overcoming of the church, the power of the Christ, Christ has nothing to do with us anymore. Because, you know, who cares about this guy somewhere in the middle of nowhere in Middle East? I'm here in Canada, I'm having my life, I'm a nice person, I'm helping my, uh, you know, neighbors here and there talking about Jesus and, you know, hoping for some kind of healing happen and all the stuff. Who cares about that guy going to show up one day and maybe I'm not even there, thank God, I don't want to be <laughs> around when he shows up, right? So now here's the thing, no, if that's the story, then there's no overcoming. There is no rising up. There is no like making your enemies your footstool. You must overcome, rise and reign on earth as kings and priests. And let me tell you, the throne of Christ is inside of you, overthrowing the throne of the beast in you is the man that is still alive inside of you, is the Adam, the earthly man that is still wants to rise and take the position of authority and kick the Christ and the authority of Christ out of your life. That's what we are dealing with. That's what we are learning to overcome, overcoming the dust of the ground, the earthly man. And I already told you who is this image. And let me just say it so I can complete my saying and then I'll show you the scriptures here. So the image of God is the son of God. The image of the beast is the son of Adam. Let me put it this way. The true image of God is the son of God. We read it. Jesus Christ, the son of God, is the image of the invisible God. The image that this beast is creating is the image of man inside of people in your mind so that you believe this man is God rather than believing the God that became man. So guys, so image, man in the image of God is the true image, not God in the image of man. When I turn on these videos in YouTube and the guy's crying out that Jesus, I've never seen Jesus like this because he showed me the grace period is, a period is over and I'm coming, I'm going to do this, I'm going to destroy this and all the things. This is the man image. 
God is not like that. He doesn't get frustrated with the sin of people. No one can tempt God. And that means what you say and what you think and the evil and the sin that you do will never change his heart towards you. And that, does, that is not going to give you the permission to be free to do sin. It's going to empower you to be free from sin because you realize a love that has never, you have never experienced someone who never gave up on you. Someone who never got mad because you did something wrong. He, God cannot be tempted by evil. When you do evil, you cannot tempt him to stop him from showing you love. God cannot be tempted by your evil doings. That means your evil doings will never tempt God to stop pouring out his grace on you. Stop pouring out his love and his redemption and his salvation and his nature on you. This image here is the image of man, not the image of God. Okay, so we have to find the image of God. So now, here's the thing. Let me quickly uh, share my screen guys here with you. So we talked about beasts, right? So there was one beast. Maybe I should, I should use another color. So let's call the dragon beast also this time. Okay. So, oh, sorry. Okay. So there was this dragon. So who was a dragon? The old, what, what did they read in verse nine? It says the old serpent, right? Okay. Where did it come from? I'm just going to put it in bracket. It was fell from heaven. So then we have a, they have, we have this beast from where? In verse uh, 1, in chapter 13, from the sea. And then we have another beast that is from the earth. Where do they have authority and where do they, where do they rule and reign? Earth. What does earth mean? It means those who dwell on earth. Let's put it carnal, earthly, soulish man. That is not a spiritual. Okay? They buy the false image of God because they don't know who God is. The only reason you can know who God is is that you open up your ears to the spirit and you become a spirit man. You become a spiritual. You become of heaven. If you, don't, if you are on earth, you can never understand the God that is in heaven. You must rise up into where he is. Open up your ears to him so you can know who he is. Okay, so now let's go to James. Um, bring James and then James chapter. All right, James chapter, bring James chapter 3. And before we continue, before I show you James, um, let's continue, go back to Revelation chapter 13. I'm going to bring myself here. All right. So now Revelation chapter 13. Did you see that uh, the mark, uh, sorry, the image, um, look at verse um, 16. He causes all, both small and, um, and great, rich and poor, free and a slave to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. So I'm going to come back to this shortly after I just talk about the James verse. Look at verse 17. And that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the, or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So verse 18 is the conclusion of all this stuff in chapter 13. Simple as that. Here is wisdom. Okay. So let's stop. Here is wisdom. So the word here, here, let's pay attention, is here means um, pointing to a place. For example, it says when, you, when someone calls you and you say, I'm here, that means you are referring to a place, something that is there, like in that place. Here is wisdom. It says, okay, this stuff that I'm saying here, in this place, in what? 
in the context of beast and all this stuff. Here is wisdom. Oh my goodness. Why is it talking about wisdom all of a sudden? Because the serpent is always, always serpent in the scripture is the symbolic of the wisdom. Serp starting from Genesis chapter 3, serpent is the symbolic of wisdom. The woman saw that she is going to be wise and that's why she ate this. Okay, so now it says, oh, here is wisdom, right? So therefore, what we just read, everything that we just read, it says it's wisdom. All of a sudden, why are you saying here is wisdom? It says wisdom. Why? Because he's talking about the serpent and the authority of the serpent and talking about all the beasts that are deceiving people by telling them what to do. That means they are giving the words of wisdom to people, creating an image for you. So you say this is who God is and then you worship that image of man that you think it's God. Okay, so now keep this. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast. Do you remember we read in Solomon that Solomon had his heart was large in wisdom and understanding. Okay, so now wisdom and understanding comes to the picture. So calculate the number of the beast for it is the number of a man. Guys, is it not saying here, it says this number of the beast, which I'm going to talk to you shortly, end of this video, is the number of a man. So it's the image of the man. It's the wisdom of man. It's not the wisdom of God. It's not the image of God. It's the wisdom of man and the image of man. Right? Because it says there is a number and it's... It's the number of man. So I'm going to talk about the number shortly. Now let's go to James and look at James chapter 3. Okay. So James chapter 3. Now look at verse 13. It says, he who is wise and understanding among you. Who is wise and understanding? So guys, again, we see wise wisdom and understanding. Who, is, who has wisdom and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom, all right? So, but if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your heart, <laughs> in your heart, so the wisdom and understanding is in the heart, so, but there is a kind of wisdom that is in the heart but is self-seeking. Do not boast and lie against the truth. Do you see? Lie against the truth. So the wisdom that is self-seeking is the wisdom that lies against the truth. Now here's a look at this. <laughs> this is amazing. Look at verse 15. It says, this wisdom does not descend from above. Oh, which wisdom? The wisdom that is self-seeking and it's in the heart of people and it is actually against the truth. That lies, right? It's in the heart. This wisdom does not descend from above. From where? From heaven. Do you see? The, the, this kind of wisdom that is self-seeking and lies against the truth, it's not the wisdom from heaven. It's not from above. Where is it from? But it is earthly, sensual, and demonic. So the word sensual here is soulish. So now let me share my screen here. So what do we see here? We have the beast. There is a beast from earth. The wisdom is earthly. Do you see? Earth, the beast from the earth. And sensual, soulish, the sea. And demonic, the dragon from the heaven. So what are those beasts? They are, oh, they are the wisdom that are not from above. They are earthly, soulish, and demonic. They are from the earth, the wisdom from the earth, the wisdom from the soul, 
or the wisdom that is demonic. Do you, did you see that? Interestingly, James points to three wisdoms only, and in the book of Revelation, we have only three beasts. One is rising from the earth, one is from the sea, and one is soulish. So now let's go back to Revelation chapter 12. So what, who, what we just saw, who are the beasts and how are they living and operating basically on earth, bringing what? The kind of wisdom. So that's their wisdom. The wisdom, they work together, they are one, they are as one, one from the earth, from the soul and the demonic wisdom, they work together to create an image and represent that image to you and tells you this is who God is. And because you know this is who God is, then you worship this kind of image that they just presented to you. Why? Because you are earthly, dwelling on earth and never open up your heart and ears and eyes to the spirit of God to be rise up into the earth. So you don't know the one true God. And that's why whatever God they present to you, they say, that's who he is and that's the problem with church because we haven't come to a fellowship of the spirit and communion of the spirit to understand who Jesus Christ is in the scriptures and we that's why we are now worshiping and thinking that's who Jesus Christ is waiting for a Jesus to come one day in a future devouring the earth from the uh, whatever and taking those that are following him so those who are following him are already in heaven according to the scripture you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. Hebrews chapter 12, guys. So now here's the thing. Um, so let's quickly talk. Let's quickly, it's been one hour and 10 minutes, and I just want to talk about in the next few minutes about the mark of the beast here. So now look at verse, um, look at verse 16. It says, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and a slave, to receive a mark on their right hand and on their forehead. And that mark, it becomes the only, it becomes their buying, their trading, okay? So now if you, if you read in the context, the mark is actually, the word mark is, it's the word engraving. Okay, so some you use an engraving tool to engrave something. So you can engrave something on a stone, right? So like uh, the tablet of stone, there was an engraving on the stone, right? So the, that, and that creates a mark simply, okay? So now if you read in the context, it says that image that they are creating, it becomes engraved into their forehead and into their hands. So now let me take you to another verse that the word mark is used. We have to let the scriptures to interpret the scriptures, not guessing what mark is. And all the false teachings out there, it's because people guessed. The mark is a chip in the hand and all this stuff. It's guessing and it's not a scriptural and it's not according to the scripture. Look at uh, Acts chapter 17. That's the place that the exact same word is used and we can understand what the mark is. So now look at Acts chapter 17. Our brother Paul is preaching the true God giving a true image of who God is to these people who are in Athens. So now here, look at verse 29. It says, therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's devising. So, the word mark is in this verse. And unfortunately, the translation didn't do their, their job here. So now here, look at verse 29. It says something shaped. The word something shaped is the word mark. Is exactly the same word that is used in Revelation chapter 13, the mark of the beast. Something shaped. It's, so it says God is not someone that you shape or you engrave by art or by man's devising. Man's devising is, the word devising here is actually the word thought. I don't know why they say devising here. 
So it says you cannot think who God is and then engrave that in your mind. Do you see? God is not someone that you engrave it because you thought this is who God is, because we are the offspring of God and that means he must show his image and engrave his image in us. We can't engrave the image of God because we are thinking or, or we have a thought. So now going back to Revelation chapter, Revelation chapter 13. So did you see? We are talking about a wisdom that is earthly, that is demonic, that is soulish. And these wisdoms, these wisdoms, they work together to engrave an image of God in your thought. So why is it saying forehead and right hand? Why? Because right hand is the position and place of authority. We read that over and over, and we, we, even, read, we, we even see it in Revelation chapter 1, um, that Jesus, even Hebrews 1, that Jesus, he sat down at the right hand of God. So right hand is the place of rulership and authority. It's what you uh, actually make things to be seen and happen, okay? So here it says, they engrave the image in your mind, and that image becomes the authority in your hand. It becomes your right hand. Have you seen, have you heard, so-and-so is so-and-so's right hand? That means the right authority of this person. So Jesus Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. So Jesus is the right hand of God. So now, what does it say? The image that the wisdom of from below, creates for you and tells you who Jesus Christ is and who God is and who you are, which is from earthly demonic wisdom, that becomes engraved in your, becomes a mark engraved in your thought and that becomes your authority, the place that you always Mm, live from that place. You worship that image. It becomes who you are. It becomes your guide to the life. It becomes, that wisdom becomes your um, father, becomes your mother, because that wisdom because becomes the ruling in your life. It becomes your right hand. It's engraved into you. And not only you have it in your mind and think about it in your mind, but actually it has become real in your life. That's the story of the right, right hand. So look at verse, um, look at verse, uh, a couple of verses before that. Verse 15, he was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. So do you see, it says the false image, after he engraved the image in your mind, in your belief, in your conscience, in your heart, in your, that becomes something that you see it all the time, then it becomes real to you. It says it was granted to him to make the image to speak. So now this image becomes alive to you, becomes real in your life. Why? Because it's about two wisdoms, guys. It's about either the wisdom that is from above or the wisdom that is from beneath. And that's what the book of Revelation is talking about. The lamb, the true lamb of God is leading the church to the throne of God by destroying all the image of the God that we made, which is false. So when you come to understand who Jesus Christ is, then you come to know and realize that what you've been worshiping and knowing and calling it God or Jesus Christ, it's actually a beast. It's the image of man. It's man-made image. It's the image that is marked and engraved by your own thoughts 
and now the true image of God must come down and reveal himself and engrave your true image, the true image in your mind until it becomes the reality in your heart and in your life and in the, in the world that we live. Until that God that we know is seen in us and through us and that's how the true lamb of God is working so that you can overcome you can overcome the beast the wisdom of the soulish man that is still hiding and residing in your heart it's time for you guys it's time for us to church to rise up into the wisdom of the living God and and demolish the wisdom of the earthly man it's time to overcome and rise up and sit with Christ on the throne in heaven and where the serpent and the dragon can never reach there. All right, guys, thank you so much for being with me today. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to our channel. We are continuing our teaching on the book of Revelation. Until next week or the next teaching, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you.